This week, David Cameron proposed new measures to tackle tax evasion after the British Prime Minister himself came under pressure for his own tax affairs. Junaan Ganesh, is this now a watershed moment that we're seeing the treatment of matters that, in Britain at least, have until now been regarded as very private, income tax statements and such like? It feels like a watershed. David Cameron was forced into disclosing his own tax arrangements, his own tax returns. Last week, George Osborne, the Chancellor, joined him on Monday. And there is now pressure for a lot of MPs to do the same, uh, people suggesting even celebrities who involve themselves in politics should be candid about their uh, financial arrangements. I'm, I'm, I do worry that this ends with almost total openness of a degree which actually discourages people who are ambivalent about uh, politics but considering uh, and entering into that profession. Why should that be the case? I mean, we, we, we famously have learned about other countries, Norway cited the US to a different degree, and I mean, they have politicians who um, go, you know, people who go for public office, and, and yet their, their tax affairs are on the public record. Yeah, but in, in, in Norway, you've got a relatively egalitarian income distribution, and in Britain, you have a much more unequal society, where people to publish all of their tax returns, even if they were completely above board, and remember it's the government's job, HMRC's job to decide that, not the public's, even if their affairs are completely above board, if they earn a lot of money, that could just become the source of uh, political opposition and poison in and of itself. And so politicians end up being judged not on their adherence to the strict letter of the law, not even their adherence to the spirit of the law, but really is their lifestyle too grand. And it, I think a lot of people in this country, because it's not an established process, this full disclosure, could end up feeling, well, that degree of candor is beyond what I'm willing to tolerate for me and my family. And you do end up losing people who you would want in, in politics. I also wonder whether in the long term, once you establish the idea that you can have a conflict of interest, which you have to disclose in financial terms, what, do you, what if you've had a relationship with someone in the past who now runs another public body? At what point do we draw the line and say there are elements of your private affairs which, no, which don't need to be disclosed? And I don't think we're having a principled discussion about that. We're, we're moving in the direction of openness with no sense of where we stop. So you're sort of saying it's sort of quite knee-jerk what's happening and, you're, uh, and is your concern that we may end up sort of enacting things or, or going down a certain sort of path, at least of setting a precedent, that you know, is all sort of done in haste and without any f forethought, really? Well, arguably there's, there's already the indication of that, which is David Cameron's decision to go public. It was politically understandable because of the amount of pressure that was on him last week. But he has this habit, and he did it after parliamentary expenses, that scandal back in 2009. He did it after the Scottish referendum in 2014, which he won, but in a, in a much more narrow way than was expected. He has this habit of being on the back foot, seemingly being really in an existential crisis, then reacting impressively in a politically sharp way, but in the process doing something that has ramifications. And what he has done by disclosing his, his tax returns, I think, is set a precedent that is very hard, at least for other parliamentarians or cabinet members, not to follow now. And it might be something that uh, they, if not he personally, ends up uh, ruining. How much has he been damaged by this particular event? And bear in mind, he is one of the, the strongest cards that the campaign being run by those people who want to uh, keep Britain in the EU. Um, are holding. Uh, is this now going to really impair that? He's easily the strongest card. Um, I think it's, it, it'll have damaged him a bit, but people knew this time last year that he is a, a very rich man by birth. I actually wonder whether the tax returns last week uh, contain numbers that are lower than the average voter would have suspected that David Cameron has inherited. Yeah, lower than some of his fellow cabinet colleagues. <laughs> uh, we, uh, absolutely, and, and the, the, the narrative this time last year was all about inherited wealth, David Cameron being a rich person, potentially out of touch, and he won a parliamentary majority. So I don't think this is completely fatal. Had he broken the law, he'd be gone by now. Had he even come close to violating the spirit of the law, he'd be in trouble. But the, as the unit trust that he was invested in did not seek to avoid tax, certainly did not evade tax. I think this is beginning to blow over already, and it shouldn't do too much damage to him in advance of June 23rd and that referendum campaign. If it did, then that campaign is in serious trouble because they really have no one on his level as a communicator and a source of credibility. Janan Ganesh, thank you very much.